Hey everyone, welcome to another Grim Dawn skill overview video guide. In this video, we are going to be going over Panetti's Replicating Missile. Panetti's Replicating Missile is essentially Magic Missile dialed to 11. When it hits an enemy, it will break apart in fragments and replicate, and it will shoot itself randomly um, across the battlefield. There's a chance it'll pass through enemies, and when it passes through enemies and hits more enemies, it will replicate some more. The ability also deals primarily elemental damage, but also some aether damage. So it acts kind of as a sidearm ability for anyone that goes into the Arcanist tree. Panetti's Replicating Missile is great for clearing out crowds of enemies, but it also can deal some fairly okay single target damage. It's easy to gear for, easy to build around, and it meshes well with pretty much every mastery in the game outside of the Arcanist, and even meshes well inside the Arcanist tree. So I'm going to read the skill description as per usual. The greatest of the Cartesian Arcanist Panetti devoted himself to advancing the classic arcane missile. His triumph is an alteration that seemingly defies the laws of the conservation of energy, causing the missile to be replicated on impact, spawning multiple copies of itself. So, the uh, things listed for Panetti's replicating missile, it has a fairly low energy cost. Even at 16 out of 16 here, it's only 92 energy per shot, and that is nothing for an Arcanist. It has a 52% chance at 16 to pass through enemies. This means that half of the shots you fire are going to shoot through enemies, and when they shoot through enemies and hit more enemies, you get more missiles, basically, that will replicate um, and fill the screen with more missiles. It also has a number of fragments. And these grow, obviously, as you grow the ability. And at 16, it has 7 to 9 fragments. And it deals um, 1,215 elemental damage, at least on this character. Obviously, it's going to be different. Um, and we don't have our gear equipped. So it actually deals a lot of elemental damage with its standard shots. Panetti's has three whole modifiers across the Arcanist tree. The first of which is Distortion. Replicating Missile distorts your enemy's very being, causing the projectile to sometimes completely pass through your target. So I believe this is where the 52% chance to pass through enemies comes from, and it will deal, you know, 300, 360 Aether damage, and it increases the fire damage of the missile. So the, the fire third of the elemental damage gets increased by distortion. The second modifier is supercharged. The air around the replicating missile becomes supercharged with static energy, electrocuting any enemies unfortunate enough to come in contact with the projectile. This adds on a large chunk of electrocute damage, increases all of the elemental damage on the missile, and has a chance to stun the target. Electrocute damage is the lightning version of the dot damages. It is... I mean, it's okay. I'm not going to knock dot damages. Dots can be really powerful in this game. Um, and increasing all three elemental damage types on the missile is pretty solid. You also get a chance to stun enemies, which when you're firing off the missiles and the missiles make missiles and those missiles make more missiles, you end up with um, basically a room full of missiles and lots and lots of enemies getting stunned because of it. 9% chance doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're basically machine gunning magic missiles into a room, it actually stuns quite a bit. And then lastly, there's proliferation. A more advanced technique of replicating missile perfected by a student of Panetti draws upon the energy of the target itself to create fragments of pure arcane energies. And this adds flat aether damage onto the ability and you get some more fragments. Um, you can see this, and we're going to go over to the training dummy real quick. You can see um, your, your different types of missiles pop off these. Um, yeah, and as you can see, it's it's basically going to fragment a bunch of times here. And yeah, it's it's a pretty awesome ability. Um, Panetti's Replicating Missile, I'm not going to lie, is... For what it is, for its simplicity, it is one of my favorite abilities in the game. Um, I love all the Arcanist abilities, but Panetti's... Um, just taking the Magic Missile concept and making it something kind of different -y and special is just really awesome. I would recommend when you point out your Panettis 
to definitely max out the first ability, especially maxing it first. Like even after you filled out um, however far you want to go in the Arcanus tree, you definitely want your replicating missile to be at 16 out of 16, regardless of your gearing. The other missiles, I would just try to keep them equal. Um, if you're sort of playing a sorcerer, distortion is probably where you want to aim first, and you'll possibly want to get it to 12 out of 12 just to maximize your fire damage. If you're on the uh, druid, I would probably recommend supercharged at 12 out of 12, just because of the electrocute damage, and it kind of synergizes with the druid combination a bit more. Um, proliferation, I'd probably say, would be... Uh, the last one you'd want to raise up after these two but yeah i generally i generally advise keeping them kind of equal so i don't quite have the replicating missile at 26 out of 16 i have 25 out of 16 which i mean i'm fine with so with this level we get 7 to 10 extra fragments we deal 4500 elemental damage um, and we got 76 chance to 76 percent chance to pass through enemies. Um, supercharged will deal a crap ton of electrocute damage, and it has a really good chance to stun. Um, yeah, we had oh yeah, there's more aether damage on distortion. This isn't where the aether damage just comes from. That is just more aether damage, um, and more fire damage. And obviously, we get more fragments out of that, and we get supercharged. So we'll go back to the training dummy just to shoot missiles at it. Um, and yeah, we have quite a few, um, quite a few missiles popping off this. In addition to getting our little elemental seekers, which we get a lot of because it's Panetti's replicating missile. It hits a lot, which means we proc a lot of things that proc off of it. So within the Arcanist tree, it's sort of those, the standard Arcanist rules apply where you're going to pick one of your attack abilities and really focus on it. So in the Kaladars video, I talked about how Kaladars Tempest is pretty much a good standalone Arcanist attack ability. And you could maybe combine Kaladars with the Aether Ray. But with Panetti's, I actually don't think you really need any of the other attack abilities. Panetti's is just going to fill the room with missiles. It's going to kill everything. So, I mean, your your Aether Ray would be redundant because Panetti's is just going to deal some pretty good single target damage on top of killing mobs. Kaladars, I mean, you could maybe use Panetti's at range and Kaladars close up, but... Again, like, Panetti's is just going to kill everything, so you're probably never going to have to deal with things getting close to you. And even then, Kalidor's Tempest, I'd maybe go a point on Kalidor's, point on Wrath of Agravex for using it as a get-the-heck-away-from-me bomb. Uh, Trojan, Trojan Sky Shards, um, again, you've already got your crowd clearing, so you don't really need the Sky Shards. You could maybe get away with it as a secondary freeze um, next to Electra's, but... Uh, yeah, you got Electra's, which works just fine, just fine as a, a crowd control ability. I do recommend pairing it with Devastation, though, because Devastation, even with one point, with a lot of plus skills, you will have it be dealing a lot of damage, and it's a good source of burst damage. Odds are you'll, you'll have a little plus to Aether damage with items and, I mean, Fabric of Reality, so it's not going to be insignificant in terms of damage. And you'll have a caster offhand in all likelihood, so yeah, throw on throw on Devastation. So for Reckless Power and Star Pact, you could go either way on it. Uh, Reckless Power will get you more casting speed, but if you don't need the casting speed, I do recommend going for Star Pact over it. For one, you have that Electrocute damage on the Star Pact. And for two, you have the skill Cooldown Reduction. And everything else in a Panetti's build, at least for me, usually ends up being on cooldown abilities, like Electra's Flash Freeze. And we're just going to jump to the Spellbreaker combo with the Nightblade. Again, I have Pneumatic Burst with this character, and that's a cooldown ability. Um, Devastation's a cooldown ability, and Mirvaroctes is a cooldown ability. So having cooldown reduction is pretty handy for this character. As is, I forgot to mention, Blade Barrier. Now, within the Spellbreaker combo, you aren't going to find much else aside from Pneumatic Burst with Shadow Dance for your defenses, and then Knight's Chill to reduce the cold damage on enemies, because Panetti's will deal, you know, basically a third of it as cold damage. Well, a quarter of it if you count the Aether damage. But yeah, that elemental damage will be affected by Knight's Chill, so anything that gets near you, you'll deal more damage to, and thus kill faster. I'd maybe also recommend Veil of Shadow if you have the spare points for it, because Veil of Shadow um, will help you with your survivability. 
Phantasmal armor as well will get you pierce res and more armor, which will help you survive, essentially. But aside from all of those, um, I'd possibly consider Blade Trap if you go further than I did into the Nightblade tree, because you'll be able to snare enemies far away. Um, and maybe Ring of Frost would combo well like as an alternative or in addition to Electra's Flash Freeze for another snare. And if you can really go far down, Merciless Repertoire will give you more cold damage. And Elemental Awakening will give you more elemental damage, which will be kept up pretty much the entire time you're playing. Because, you know, Pneumatic Burst, you'll be able to keep it going all the time. And you'll just get that elemental damage bonus. Otherwise, you're pretty much ignoring the top half of the Nightblade tree. Because it really is the, um, like you've already got your range damage you know with panetti's replicating missile you don't need phantasmal blades you're not dual wielding at all so you don't need any of this section and you're not really entering melee combat you're probably not going to be able to get down the blade spirit um so yeah mostly for this combination it's sitting in the lower left hand corner here um and this is just good enough like the spellbreaker combination with arcanist with mirror sphere burst and veil like you will have an amazing set of defenses and it applies to a panetti's build as well as per usual ignore these numbers this is not what i would go for with a panetti's replicating missile build this is my aether ray arcanist i'm going to be doing this again where i get to do the visuals on the tree in game but i'm not using panetti's characters you know not using characters that use the ability i'm talking about um it's just way easier to do the visuals here um on other characters instead of building five characters for all the class combinations so flame touched and temper are great for panetti's because you'll be building up the fire and lightning damage and your offensive ability for just increasing the damage of panetti's replicating missile and temper just with a single point gets you a little extra armor blast shield pretty handy um i'd i'd probably recommend at least a point in blast shield if you get that deep into the tree Block Water Cocktail, you could probably skip on in a Panetti's build. Now, you could possibly work in Stun Jacks. I would avoid the Quick Jacks Transmuter, but if you do Stun Jacks, Lightning Damage will cross over. You'll have another source of stunning things, and it's a guaranteed stun for a period of time. And you have another thing that electro electrocutes. Excuse my enunciation. And um, I actually would wonder if you could... Stun Jacks full spread, a group of Stun Jacks into an enemy, you know, a set of enemies, and then just burn them down with the missiles. It's a possible build idea. You also get Canister Bomb with Concussive Bomb, but you could actually turn the Canister Bomb into a real bomb, throw this in a room to soften the enemies up, hit them with the stun, burn them with the Panetti's Replicating Missiles. Granado could also work with this build, I think, because you have that guaranteed knocked down, and you knock down a hero, knock down a value target, and then, of course, shoot it with missiles. It also, and this is pretty much true for all of the trees, crosses over damage type-wise. Because if you're doing Panetti's Replicating Missile with Distortion, you're building up your fire damage, and you're building up fire damage from this tree. So there's a lot of synergy here with the sorcerer combination and obviously flashbang and searing light work well as with um pretty much every build um even though it's on a, a one second skill recharge now with uh with star pact and a caster off and you'll actually get that really really low so it's almost like it's old spammable form um i don't know about mortar trap or thermite mines with this particular build you could use these two as a devotion procker maybe but I'd probably skip on them because you're already filling a room with damage and these don't provide control as much. Um, and Vind Vindictive Flame with its total speed actually will help you cast faster and it's a, it's a not bad ability to just put a couple points in. So Warlock with Panetti's Replicating Missile gets kind of interesting. The first thing I'll point out is, of course, Blood of Dreeg with Aspect of the Guardian. Blood of Dreeg for its heal and the bonus offensive ability and then Aspect of the Guardian for the resistances it gives you. If you keep this ability up the entire time, you'll end up with a great, great source of defense on top of all of your Arcanist abilities that give you defense as well. 
Curse of Frailty with Vulnerability is another great ability that crosses with Panetti's. Because once you get these two built up, it hits a wide area. So you can start with the curse, it'll soften the enemies up, weaken them down up a little bit, and then you can shoot them with missiles and you'll deal more damage with your missiles. Also, someone familiar, though the pet isn't that great, it does have Storm Spirit, and Storm Spirit is another 100% elemental damage, and that is excellent for you because you can have basically another Ascander's Elemental Exchange on your character all the time. And I mean, it will die, it's killable by the enemies, but it doesn't die so much that it gets annoying. So having another 100% elemental damage is actually not that bad. Also, Sigil of Consumption can be used as a heal in addition to Blood of Dreeg, and the destruction modifier on this is fire damage, which is one of your damage types. Now, it could also be an interesting build if you pick up the Blood Orb of Chathan, which turns all of your elemental damage into chaos damage, and then you can pick up Second Right, which is just percent chaos damage. This will also mean that Storm Spirit wouldn't be necessary to pick up, and um, probably you'd want to skip on the Curse of Frailty then, but it would mean you could synergize with Doombolt and synergize with Possession to just get more Chaos damage out there. This would also let you synergize a bit more with Sigil of Consumption since, you know, Destruction is Fire and Chaos damage. All in all, you could get some pretty unique builds out of the Warlock combination with Panati's Replicating Missile, one of which is kind of item dependent but otherwise, there is actual synergy here. It's similar to how the Nightblade would work, where you're sort of picking up things from the lower half of the tree more than the upper half, and they're gonna be support abilities um, to support Panetti's Replicating Missile. So if you combine with the Shaman, the Druid combination, uh, there are another... It's like it's like the, the Warlock combo. There's some interesting things going on here. The first of which, Wendigo Totem, while it doesn't mesh with your damage types, is a heal. So you can throw this down, you know, near you while you're shooting missiles, and it'll heal you, deal a little damage, keep you going, keep you sustained while you're shooting missiles. Storm Totem actually does synergize a bit with Panetti's, because you can throw Storm Totems down with your Panetti's going on. This will just lightning bolt everything while, you know, you're missiling everything. Storm Colors Pact increases electrocute damage which works well with supercharged so this is where this is actually where i'd recommend supercharge because you can get a lot of electrocute damage between an arcanist shaman combo specifically because of storm caller's pact i mean you can't mesh it with star pact at that point but that's fine um because like you'll get a lot a lot of electrocute damage i'd almost say it's a little better just for that and the chance of giant amount of lightning damage added onto the missiles is not, not something to pass. Also, bonus crit damage. Bonus crit damage is awesome. Wind Devil is another interesting ability that can combo with the missiles. Because you can throw out the Wind Devils. They'll just go off on their own. They'll damage things. Again, you got some more electrocute synergies here. You can hit, hit the enemies with impaired aim as well. But also the Raging Tempest modifier on this ability slows targets and reduces their elemental resistance, thus increasing your damage. The Maelstrom ability is also another Electrocute synergy, but it's also a Lightning synergy. So you could get a really awesome, basically Lightning Missile build with the Druid combination. Beyond that, you also do end up with Mog Dragon's Pact, which, thanks to Heart of the Wild, you can get a lot of HP going with a druid combo with not a lot of effort or even point investment. Just like 9-10 points in Heart of the Wild and you've got 30% more hit points. Now for the Warlock and Druid combos, I don't think I'd recommend the Summon Hellhound or Summon Briarthorn abilities because you won't be able to fit in a lot of pet bonuses here. That being said, I'd maybe consider for a hybrid build, if you really wanted a hybrid build, you could maybe do it with a druid or with a warlock and Panetti's replicating missile. Because you'd be sitting here just firing missiles off, and your pet could just wander around, draw aggro, and you know, basically be kind of a tank for you. 
It's something to think about, though I wouldn't say it would be a very optimized build. But part of this build series, or this guide series, this skill guide series, is pointing out little little things like that sometimes that are potential builds. So yeah, I'd maybe consider doing a druid or a warlock that's doing panettis to possibly throw some points on, you know, maybe manifestation with the hellhound. Um, or if you could find a way to get, like, through the the Ring of Kelfid Zod, I think it is, to get some elemental damage on a Briarthorn, maybe? I don't know. I'm just throwing a build out there. Possible build option. Um, that would also go the same for Conjure Primal Spirit. Um, you'd want to do something like that. And obviously, you don't want Primal Bond with this build at all. And you're never going to use Savagery or Primal Strike since you're shooting missiles. And you're not going to be using Devouring Swarm or Grasping Thorns. You have better control options in the arcanist tree and lastly we have the battle mage combination the soldier arcanist the first ability i'm going to point out is war cry and war cry is awesome i think every soldier character i've ever made has used war cry at 12 out of 12 it hits a huge radius and it drops the enemy's health by 33 percent thus making them much much quicker to kill the only problem here is it taunts the target I mean, that's not a big deal if you're playing a battle mage, because you'll probably have a lot of survivability just due to the combination. And um, yeah, you'll just you'll be shooting missiles anyways. So you taunt them and they're probably just going to die as they run up to you. You do get things like fighting spirit. And if you're using a shield, which is not, you know, it's an option. You lose a bit of casting speed and regen. But with the right shield, you could end up with like, um, not losing a whole lot of your uh, your benefits to having a castery shield. And you'll gain, you know, Mainer's Will, shield training, and Overguard as options. I would probably avoid Blitz in a Panetti setup, as you just don't want to run in there blindly. Um, I would highly recommend Military Conditioning, though, for this particular setup. And Field Command... You don't really need points if you're doing a Panetti's build in squad tactics, though all damage, I mean, you are using like four damage types on the replicating missiles anyways, so getting all four of those boosted up essentially by all damage is, you know, not insignificant. You also have options in Decorated Soldier for some resistances and Scars of Battle for more resistances. Mostly though, in the Soldier Tree, I'd shoot for War Cry. Military conditioning, maybe veterancy, take it all the way to 10 to get a crap ton of health regen. And uh, probably not go past the war cry field command area. The battle mage section is mostly to get these um, very defensive passive benefits to your health in there. Rather than like combine it in some weird way with other abilities. Like every ability in the game, there are plenty of one-off items here and there that support it. And I didn't go into it in, Cal in the Calidor's Tempest skill guide because if I were to start going into lists of items that support various abilities in the game, these videos would be like three hours long because there's so many options for all the abilities in the game. But if a particular ability has a lot of items supporting it, or it's very, very, or I should say, but... If an ability has a very specific set of items that support it, like a pre-made set, then I'll actually point that set out. In this case, Panetti's Replicating Missile has the Invoker's Elements. This is an offhand, amulet, and both of your rings combination. And the offhand, the Invoker's Blaze, gives you Elemental Seal. So chance on attack, you'll throw seals down. And since you're attacking a lot with Panetti's, you'll actually get quite a few Elemental Seals on all sorts of things um, on the battlefield. The Invoker's Shard has the Invoker's Secret, which requires a caster offhand. 100% chance when hit. Um, it's sort of like... Missiles that swirl around you and anything that gets close um, Will be hit by them and They have enough of a duration that their recharge won't um, Won't be too much of an issue and you'll see it happen a lot when you use this set and you take a hit 
You've probably seen these missiles floating around the character in this video already. That's what those are. It's the Invoker's Secret um, Granted Skill from the Invoker's Shard Amulet. Um, the rings are pretty much just rings. They'll, uh, they'll have a, a lot of different um, just stat bonuses for you. One is for Distortion, one is for Supercharged. And in the set as a whole, um, you'll end up with a lot of pluses to the various Panetti's abilities, and you'll end up with Invoker's Fury, 100% chance on critical attacks. You'll mark the target um, with a sigil that reduces their fire and lightning resistance, thus increasing your fire and lightning damage. Um, it also deals on its own fire and lightning damage. Um, with a lot of gearing, you can get all three of your elemental types above 1,000, and you'll actually have a crap ton of Aether damage as well. Um, but yeah, the Invoker set is pretty much your your wanna grab wanna grab up end game Panetti's item set. Though it's not necessary, like I said, Panetti's replicating missile. This character is still wearing a bunch of greens and blues, and he does just fine. So for devotion for Panetti's replicating missile, there are a ton of ways you can take this. It all depends on how you've built your character, really. If you're focusing on the Aether damage portions, you can always pick up the Imp for Aether Fire, and then the Widow for Arcane Bomb, and move on up to Spear of the Heavens, which will support the missiles pretty well, given that it's, you know, an elemental Aether ability in and of itself, and you get more Lightning damage and Aether damage, and then you'll get an ability that's Aether Lightning damage. Um, if you're building on the cold side of things, you can go up and pick up Blizzard from Amatok, the Spirit of Winter, or come down to the Behemoth and pick up Whirlpool in addition to getting a crazy amount of cold damage nodes. If you're focusing on fire, you can go over to Ulzin's Torch and you'll pick up the Meteor Shower ability on top of getting a lot of fire and burn um, nodes out of that. For lightning, um, there isn't really a capstone ability for lightning. Like there, there isn't really one for Aether as well. The closest thing is Spear of the Heavens. But you could also pick up the Tempest for Reckless Tempest. Just add Lightning Bolts into the mix with your missiles. Though um, Arcane Bomb is probably what you'll really want for it because you'll have that, you know, Lightning and Aether Resistance reduction on your missiles. Um, though, you know, the Tempest is something to consider. If you are using something cooldown heavy and you don't have the, uh, the Clairvoyance set, and it bothers you that you have so many cooldowns, you can pick up Time Dilation. You'd probably want to attach it to, like, Electra's Flash Freeze, and then you can Flash Freeze a room. This will proc off it, and then you'll basically have the Flash Freeze right back, and that's a good indicator that you've hit the ability. But honestly, if you're really going to go for the funnest, coolest, awesomest Devotion ability, you'll want Elemental Seekers from the Blind Sage. And I just respect this guy into this because you'll get a lot of these guys off the missiles because there's not really a huge amount of cooldown on this ability. And pretty much every... You'll have five of them up, I think, all the time. Just because you'll be... Maybe more. Just because you'll you'll be procking it so many times with the missiles because they'll just be hitting everything. This procs on attack, 100% chance. And you're just restricted by a tiny, tiny amount of skill recharge. Otherwise, I mean, it's just amazing how many of these little these little dudes you'll get just by fighting things. And they're just pure damage for you. Their damage type meshes well perfectly with yours. And each of the nodes in here will give you 100% to a different elemental type on top of like 80% there. And some nice extra little abilities within this tree. So along the way to getting that, you will also probably want to pick up Row 1's Crown, since you'll get a lot of elemental damage out of it. Um, you'll also get the Elemental Storm ability, which is what I used to recommend as your main Panetti's um, attached ability, but I'm attaching this to Devastation now. It's still a really solid ability, but uh, yeah, the, see the Seekers are just so much more awesomer. Um, yes, I said awesomer, much more awesomer. Um, then the storm that I do recommend this over I do recommend them over this though. This is still a great ability Alrighty, so that was the Panetti's replicating missile 
skill guide video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave me some comments below on what you think needs improving in these videos, whether you liked it or disliked it, and please leave a like or subscribe. That really helps me and really helps the channel out. So thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.